Happy Monday. Today's episode is a Q&A mashup. We answer some questions regarding meal prep. Meal prep if you are on a different schedule or have a different routine than your spouse or significant other. And then we also cover our personal health and hygiene habits and routines. And we just want to remind you all today that we do have a giveaway going on this week. We are giving away a Opti Health Stack, which is First Form Reds and Greens. It's $130 value. So if you have ordered from First Form in the last 30 days through the links that we've shared on social media uh, or here in the podcast show notes. Simply just forward your receipt from that order over to info at fitmomlife.com before this Friday, April 8th, and we will enter you to win the reds and greens. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episodes. If you do, share it with friends, tag us on social media if you share it, and I hope you guys have a fabulous week. You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators and this is The Food Code. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I feel like we need new intros. <laughs> we we need to like maybe Google some. Hello, lady. That one always sticks out. The- so have you been watching? Um, this is probably going to be really inappropriate, but I just like it keeps popping up in my mind from last night. So there's a new show on, I want to say HBO Max, maybe it's talking about it's like the Lakers dynasty. No. OK, well, um, I can't remember his name, but the guy from Talladega Nights that is also in Step Brothers. Mm-hmm. The, um, not Will Ferrell, the other guy. I'm totally blanking on his name. But anyways, he is he plays the owner of the Lakers, who basically was the owner that came in in like the 80s, 70s, 80s, and turned it into like show business. Okay. And turned like basketball games not... Because at that time, basketball like wasn't very famous. Mm-hmm. It was more like golf and stuff like that. And he came in and kind of like catalysted basketball games being like the cheerleaders are all really hot mm-hmm. and like it's more of like a, an, a, an event mm-hmm. versus like a game um but anyways he also was big into like hugh hefner and like you know he was friends with them and like had keys to the playboy mansion and stuff and so <laughs> when you said hello lady it reminded me of him and in this episode last night he came to like the new owners meeting mm-hmm. and he's trying to like make friends with all of them and they're all like kind of like straight laced and not as like uh, you know he's like he's at the playboy mansion so obviously not super straight laced um and he he goes to one of the guys he goes you gonna come out with us later tonight and the guy's like oh, i don't know he goes you ever have a blow drop with a girl having champagne in her mouth <laughs> And I look at Nick and I was like, what the actual hell? I just like, <laughs> and it was like catalyst in this conversation. And that like that one moment of the episode last night is like all I remember from the That's episode. So funny. And it's so funny seeing him in like a different role because it's a little bit more of a serious role. There's still funniness to it. Um, but anyways, if you're not, it, it's a pretty good show so far. We'll have to watch it. It is. It's entertaining. Anyways, there's your intro for today. Happy Monday. Um, <laughs> Flow jobs with champagne in your mouth. There you I go, go ladies. Well, you know what I said to Nick? I go, you would choke. How would you breathe? I have no idea. Anyways. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's your... Uh, <laughs> random conversations random that conversation. and I sometimes have and now you can just let your mind wander and then maybe with your man if you're listening you can uh give him a surprise <laughs> give him a surprise experiment <laughs> i won't even talk about the conversation hey, that ensued after that y- you gotta keep maybe things, off air you gotta keep things fresh you know what i'm saying like that's not a, one of my clients today she was messaging me some stuff inappropriately um like it was you know we're going back and yeah. forth about stuff or whatever and uh talking about just like libido and everything and so i said um we were talking about the importance too of like taking rest days and she's like well what about like you know sexy time and i was like i guess it depends upon who's doing the work <laughs> so anywho, oh, there's goodness. many other things that we could talk about that are way worse than that so don't I get know. your panties in the bundle geez guys okay anyways we're talking today about <laughs> meal prep <laughs> <It's> transition <laughs> from blowjobs with champagne into meal prep <laughs> so Liz, I'm going to let you talk about this question because I believe you received this question. I did receive this question. So meal prep companies and best for vacation. Um, And then what about like if we have different schedules so we can't meal prep? 
this isn't Friday fire, but I'm just going to be really blunt. You have control over the fact if you meal prep or not. Like, I don't care if you guys have different schedules, communicate with each other, make a plan in place. If you're home and you're the one making dinner, make enough so you guys have leftovers. If he's home making dinner or whoever it is, make enough so you have leftovers, batch cook. This is so simple and easy. So every Sunday, you guys probably see me share this Saturday or Sunday because I've been doing some things on Saturday too, depending upon our routine and what we have going on. I make a big batch of chicken or some sort of instant pot protein. Lately, it's been, we've done pork carnitas, we've done um, Italian beef, I did a Instant Pot uh, chicken fried rice. Like, there is no reason that you can't take five minutes and put the freaking meat in the Instant Pot and put some seasoning in it. Like, I, I get really fired up about this because I think this is one of the things that is the most important thing that you can do. And yet people are like, it's too complicated, I don't have time. It takes five minutes. I have a toddler. Like, I literally still make time to make food meal prep is one of the biggest things that is a non-negotiable for me because i know how much it impacts the decisions that i make during the week one thousand percent i'm already thinking about tomorrow like i only made ground turkey enough for two days and tonight we're doing chicken caesar salad so we're not going to have like a leftover i'm already thinking about okay tonight while we're cooking i'm going to have to put the ground turkey on the skillet and cook another because i have enough sweet potatoes i have enough vegetables i just don't have enough yeah. ground turkey and so i'm like i'll do it tonight while i'm cooking i'm already thinking ahead like I am constantly thinking the next 24 to 48 hours, what will I have available to me for food? And some people can say that that's like obsessive, but guess what? It makes my decisions a whole heck of a lot easier when I'm actually in the moment of them because uh, it's just, because tomorrow, basically the next three days are going to be nonstop for me. Like trying to get everything in. I moved a lot of meetings from next week to this week so that I can have next week off for the most part on vacation. I have My days are packed. Tomorrow, I'm not going to have time to cook lunch. I'm not going to have time to go into the kitchen for 20 minutes and cook these things. So I'm going to have to do it tonight so I can literally just heat it up for five minutes, eat it while I'm working or right before a meeting or whatever it is. And so you have to be thinking ahead. In terms of travel, speaking of travel, I will be on travel next week. I'm already knowing like I'm going to be at the grocery store probably the night that we get there or the next morning and I will be getting things. We're staying in a house, which is fortunate. But even if we weren't staying in a house, I would be getting to the grocery store for everything to put in a mini fridge in terms of easy snacks like yogurt, hard boiled eggs, ground turkey, or I'm sorry, deli meat, deli turkey, stuff like that, baby carrots, things that are easy, that are protein, fiber based, lower in calories because you know on vacation, we're going to be going out to eat frequently. We're probably going to be doing dinner out most nights. And so that will be a higher calorie meal. There might be some drinks. There's almost always like chips and salsa around. And so having alternatives and having other options are extremely important for me because otherwise I will not make good decisions. I know that about myself. I have to set up my environment properly. That's what we talked about on Friday Fire or maybe this week, Friday Fire. Um, in terms of if you're traveling like in a car, awesome. You can bring a cooler. I frequently do this when we go on road trips any longer than like two hours. I will bring up cooler with a lot of the things I just mentioned. You can do RX bars, protein bars, rice cakes. You know, you can do um, dried fruit, trail mix. Just make sure it's moderated. Trader Joe's has great little like individual baggies worth. So you just have to plan. You, yep. you have to plan, guys. Yeah. It, it literally comes down to thinking ahead, being one step ahead, right? So honestly, before I go somewhere on vacation, I look up the stores and I have even gone so far as to order groceries and like pick them up then when we've gotten, you know, in yep. from, you know, traveling. If it's like a later flight or something like Walmart has pickup, Publix, you know, if you're in the South, like there's a lot of places that you can order online and pick it up or you can even have it delivered to your hotel or resort wherever you're staying. Um, I do the same thing though. Like I pack a lot of these things, you know, with us. And even if I'm flying, I bring things in my bag, like the trail mix or the um, rice cakes or protein bars or things like that. Like all of that stuff travels pretty easily. Where people go wrong is that they don't think to have things with them, even like beef jerky, like high protein sources with them so that they don't end up empty handed and then are hangry at the airport. And then they end up making, you know, a poor decision in terms of meal prep companies. So there's a lot of them out there. Um, you know, for me, one of the ones that I have uh, tried in the past is uh, eat to evolve. It came frozen. And I got to be honest, like I didn't love that it was frozen and then microwaving it because it kind of turned watery. So I did a little more research today and I believe that trifecta and Fresh and Lean are both companies that ship to your door and they are not frozen. And then you got the power plate meals. Yeah, because I thought ahead when we get back next Saturday 
from our vacation, Nick leaves Sunday night for four nights for work. And so I do not want to have to cook those nights. That is how far ahead I'm thinking. As soon as he told me he was leaving for four nights, I was like, okay, I'm ordering meals because I don't want to have to cook after I get the kids down at 830 by myself. I don't want to come downstairs and cook for you know 30 to 45 minutes to make dinner. So I bought five meals that I can just heat up and I can eat. And they're great macros. They're great calories. They're reasonable. Um, factor meals were pretty good. They're super expensive. Like they were, I think, four meals for 70 bucks. This, I got five meals for $65 with shipping included. So it was much, I'm sorry, six meals, six meals for $65 with shipping included. They taste really good too. They're like fun, different flavors. Um, and so I think they're between 350 and 450 calories. So I, I always get those when I'm either coming back from a vacation or Nick's gone and I don't have, I don't want to cook. And so thinking ahead you have to think ahead in these yeah. situations you can also just be a lazy meal prepper and that's yeah. okay like this is the one scenario where i will i will say that i think it's okay to be a little lazy and just say like i want to simplify this it's not even yeah. lazy it's just simplifying so for example you can buy a lot of you know pre-prepped proteins that you either throw in the microwave or just chop up and put onto like a salad for example with a bag salad kit i have a whole tiktok video and i think i even put it on my instagram from costco and trader joe's that like show you some of these things but a lot of stores have really good high quality meats that are already prepared so i know that's like simply smart has some really good ones like organic chicken that's already done you can buy rotisserie chicken like you can buy a lot of things in the store to not have to spend a lot of time cooking in the kitchen let's just say you you know, don't want to cook, you don't like to cook, or um, you don't feel like you are a good cook and you're afraid to, you know, try crazy recipes, well then maybe consider ordering from some of these companies or just get some things that are already pre-made, throw it with a bag salad kit and some avocado on top, sweet potato fries and air fryer, boom, you got a great meal. So those are, are really simple things. And, you know, again, I go back to what I said before and I know that it sounds harsh, but like at the end of the day, if you have goals and it's a priority, communicate with your spouse if you guys are on different schedules and get a plan in place. Yep. Like that's what you got to do. Yep. All right. The second thing was our health routine. What uh, do <laughs> are your health routines? Can you dive into this a little bit more? We're probably going to cut it at the end of this because we got to get on a client call. So we will finish this Q&A next Monday, but we're going to take a little deep dive into what products we use, what supplements we take, what our movement looks like, our self-development routines, uh, all the things. And I will say that for me, this has evolved over time and it continues to evolve. So a backstory about me is I'm always very routine with things. Um, I was homeschooled as a kid. My mom was like, you wake up, you make your bed, you have breakfast, you are starting school by 9 a.m. Like that was really a blessing that she was so strict with that because I truly believe in entrepreneurship. If you do not have structure and you do not have a plan in place, you're probably all over the board. And this is just how I function. So there is no judgment on other people who don't live in, you know, breathe by their calendars. It is what works for me because I have so many things on my mind throughout the day and so many things that I remember about clients that my to-do list is not something that I remember. Like I have to put it on my calendar. I have a running tab of to-do list. And so this is just something that I have found over the years has worked for me um, in terms of routine. Becca will share a little bit, you know, of course about hers as well, but I think it's important to understand that everybody's structure is going to look a little bit different. So you need to find what works for you ultimately. Yeah. And I will say like, if you are a mother, you will probably need to take advantage of mornings. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, especially if you're a mother of small children, if you have kids that like are pretty self-sufficient, they're older, they can wake up, they can get themselves dressed, they can make themselves breakfast and stuff. You might be able to get away with doing evening workouts or something like that. But in my opinion, the people that are like night owls and do more work at night and sleep in later, they don't have kids or they have kids that are old enough that can manage their own lives. And so if you are a mother, I think that in my experience, you have to take advantage of morning times. Mm -hmm. Be, if you want any time to yourself, that is like for positive, uninterrupted time that people do not get in the way of. Um, that's and just my personal experience. You're still not positive that it's not going to get uninterrupted, totally. uninterrupted, right? Because your kids might wake up or whatever. You might have a sick kid. Like those are one-off scenarios, but I 1000% uh, agree. I know in the morning time, nobody's interrupting me. You know, my husband gets up early. So I think that makes it easier for me as well. Like he gets up to go to the gym around five. So I hear him. My alarm is set usually 530. I wake up sometime in between there. If I heard him, sometimes I don't hear him, you know, um, it just kind of depends. But 
I like having time to myself, even if I'm not going to the gym, because it's quiet time. And so I can make a cup of coffee, I can do a little work, or I can read. Like Sunday morning this past weekend, I woke up at five, I was wide awake. Instead of going back to sleep for an hour, hour and a half, just because I could, I got up and I just started, I made a cup of coffee and I started reading or doing Atomic Habits right now with our clients. And that was great because I got like a whole chapter done and I just had that quiet time to myself. And I think oftentimes we're so busy or working with technology so much that we never just get time to ourselves to be quiet. So, um, you know, I think this is, uh, this is where you could say I'm not a morning person and I would say I wasn't either, but I quickly became one because I I know that it makes me a better person throughout the day. Yep. I'm not as rushed. I have my bearings. So what does my morning routine look like? So like I said, I get up at like 5, 5.30. Um, I basically come downstairs. I make my pre-workout waffle. Sometimes a banana if I have that. Um, I make my coffee with collagen in it. Usually have my LMNT. Either I do a little work or I read. And then I go to the gym. Yeah. My morning is up at 5, 5.10. I'm in the garage working out by 5.30. I have my LMNT and usually some type of like, I've been doing like a graham cracker recently just because it's easy. I don't have to make it. <laughs> I just take it out of the box and eat it. Um, it's a really easy to digest carb for me. Um, and so I've been doing that with the LMNT before my workout. I'm done working out by 6.30, 6.40. I go shower. I make Taylor's bottle. I wake her up, feed her, get Carson, make sure Carson's up. Sometimes Nick is also working out during this time. He usually works out later and gets done around seven-ish. I try to be showered, pretty much dressed, ready to go by seven so that I can then you know, manage Taylor, get her fed, dressed, get Carson up, going, moving, going to the bathroom, dressed. Um, and then Nick's usually showering by like 7.15. He's helping me with that after that. Um, and then we are off to daycare, hopefully by like 7.30, 7.45. I'm back home by 8.15 making breakfast getting started with work. Yeah. Yeah. I try to be depending upon the day, like ready and sitting at my computer no later than nine. Like even sometimes when we go work out, like the latest is like nine 30. It really kind of depends. So the morning time, I mean, either way, if I am not going to the gym first thing in the morning and I'm going with my husband, like after we drop Marcus off, I still get up and I have that time. And honestly, as we just talked about with meal prep, sometimes I make like ground turkey or ground beef in the morning time while I'm waiting for my gluten-free waffle to come out of the air fryer and my coffee to brew because it takes five, six, maybe eight minutes. I don't know how long it takes yeah. to ground beef. It's not that long. Um, so sometimes I'll do those things or I will you know, go through like the fridge and be like, okay, here's what I'm going to have today. And I track my food while I'm waiting for, you know, that to, to get ready. So any hoot, um, nighttime. So for me, uh, we are in bed by nine, nine thirty, and that sounds very grandma like, but I need my sleep and it's very important to me. So Marcus goes down right now. He's going down around seven 30. We've tried pushing it off and then he wakes up earlier. It's horrible. So we're going to keep the seven 30. We really enjoy that. Um, time to ourselves. Sometimes we'll watch a show. Um, we have a few shows that we like, but sometimes we honestly just go upstairs and do our nighttime routine and like get in bed and just read from like eight, eight 30 to nine, nine 30. Yeah. So it, it's very like up and down. I mean, for me, um, I always try to read before bed. It just puts me to sleep. Like I get really tired, really fast reading. Um, and we don't start a show if we know that like we can't finish it or it's not like a short 30 minute show because obviously nobody likes to just like cut off your show. But sleep is important to me. Um, I usually dim the lights too. After Marcus is down, we start dimming the lights in the house. Um, I have a pink Himalayan salt lamp that I use. Of course, I do my skincare routine. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just not willing to sacrifice sleep because I'm hangry and angry not hangry, but I'm more hangry the next day because I crave all the things. I feel like I'm hungover. Yeah, no, I'm exactly the same way. It's usually we do dinner with the kids. Well, we don't eat dinner with the kids, but we make the kids dinner at 6.30. They're in the bath by 7. Then Taylor is like bottling immediately to bed after that around 7.30. Carson is a process right now. (laughs) He really bites bedtime. Um, So we start his bedtime around 8.00. And that includes Nick going upstairs, reading a book or two to him, brushing teeth, getting him in bed at like by 830. Then I go upstairs, I rock him, I sing him five songs, all the same songs every night. I lay with him for a few minutes and then I pet his head six times. This is every (laughs) night. This is my three-year-old and high five. And then I leave the door halfway open 
and I have to leave the hall light on. And I'm downstairs by 845. So it takes a 45 minute process to get Carson down right now. And then Nick and I eat dinner at 845 because that is what has, we've tried to push it up. But it just, especially now that it's warmer out, we're outside mm-hmm. leading into their dinner time. So I can't be inside cooking dinner. And Nick usually doesn't get home from work until like 6 or 630. And so we don't cook and, and we can't eat until both kids are down at 845 right now. And so we stay that's like our time together. And I always tell Nick, as soon as we sit down to eat, I'm like, I'm going to bed in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nice to see you today. <laughs> so, and that's, and so like by, if, if it's 930 and we have not started cleaning up, that's like my trigger. If I have not cleaned up dishes and like, I'm ready to be in bed, um, then I get up and start cleaning. And I, at the very latest, it is like right before 10 p.m. and I'm trying to get my eyes shut. Um, I'll usually read right before bed too, like get into bed and read the five, 10 pages I have left to read. Um, but yeah, we are is asleep by 10 p.m. at the latest. I try to make it closer to 9.30. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, um, we're just in a different phase. You know, yeah. you guys are in a different phase. And uh, one of the things that we have done, especially since we sold our gym, is started eating with Marcus. And so sometimes it's just like tonight we're doing like air fryer stuff, um, you know, and so or we'll grill or whatever if it's nice outside. But it's tough, right? If you're outside and then you got to come in and make dinner. So sometimes it's like, man, I just want to throw some stuff in the Instant Pot. But I do enjoy that because Marcus now when we take a bath, he wants mommy in the bath with him. <laughs> So that's a whole fun thing because that's, yeah, always yeah. it is. Disaster. Luckily they do both bath, both of them in the bath right now. Yeah. And K- Taylor kicks and splashes Carson. That's awesome. And Carson. And that was my irrational three-year-old last night was crying in the bath because he didn't want to get out of the bath, but he didn't want to be wet. And I was like, Carson, this is a new level of irrational. <laughs> you cannot be dry and in the bath at the same time. So either you get out and I dry you off or you are wet in the bath. He's like, but I don't want my hair to be wet. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. This, I, I cannot argue with you right now around this. Marcus is in the phase where he wants to wash me. So he's like, wash hair. And I'm like, no, like I have a lot more hair than you have. Like, please don't. And also I haven't posted this yet, but I should post it because I was sharing uh, with another friend of ours the, at the ball pit this past weekend, a trick if you have a toddler and they do not like having their hair washed what I've done is I've told Marcus now, look up to the corner. I'm like, do you see a bat? Do you see a bird? Do you see like an animal or something on the wall so that he looks up? And then I quickly put the water on. And we've, so, the, yeah. yeah. We've had to teach Carson the yeah. look up and then we'll give him a, ra- a dry rag so he can wipe his face. Yeah. It's very traumatic sometimes. Yeah. It's really funny now though because Marcus now just like every time we get in there, he like points and looks as, as if there is really something there. But then we're also reading this other book and he thinks there's monsters. I'm like, please, no, we're not going down this route. Anyways, back to our healthcare routine. So supplements, I already mentioned this. In the morning time, I usually do protein or collagen in my coffee. Supplement wise, so I will say right now I'm taking more than I usually do because I'm taking prenatals and prenatal DHA. But I have a thyroid support complex. I take magnesium, vitamin D and B12, which is like sublinguals. I also take digestive enzymes with my meals and then reds and greens as well as the LMNT. So it's a lot. It feels like a lot. I do split these up. I don't take them all at one time. That would be craziness. Um, So I usually take my like enzymes with my meals, my magnesium, I take um, just like later in the day, probably with my reds and my greens. Um, But the only things that I am pretty strict about taking in the morning is my vitamin D and B12 because vitamin D is best absorbed before noontime with healthy fats, my thyroid support complex. And then I do take my uh, prenatals and DHA and stuff in the morning time. Yeah. So I am a firm believer in I only take supplements. I truly feel a very big difference with Otherwise, I don't take them. Like, I don't care if someone says that they're amazing and you should, like, if I feel physically different by taking them, I will continue to take them, which has been the case with protein. So I do protein powder and creatine. I am starting to add Um, so many benefits to creatine. It's like the most well-researched, safe, effective, cheap supplement you can take. Um, So I take that with my protein and chocolate milk post-workout. And then sometimes at nighttime, if I need protein, I'll do a protein mug cake as well because they're delicious. And then I do my element tea before my workout. I've noticed a huge difference in energy with that. I do magnesium. I up that around my cycle. Um, I do that every day. And then I do my reds and my greens every day. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I don't really take a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. I don't like to take a whole lot. I feel pretty good with what I do. Um, I don't take digestive enzymes anymore because my digestion has regulated pretty well. I don't feel like I need them anymore. There was a period where I did feel like I needed them. Um, 
But yeah, I, I feel like digestion's good. I feel my energy's a lot better by implementing a lot of these things and my workouts feel really good. So yeah, the element D definitely I would say has helped a ton yeah. um, with energy. So in terms of uh, movement, so I do a six day split currently and then I walk a lot. Actually, I was just looking the last two weeks, my average is 14,000 steps a day. Um, some days give or take, right? Again, we have toddlers, we're on the go, I walk as much as I can. Um, in terms of skincare, I've talked about this before, I love the fray skincare. So this sounds complicated to some people, but it's actually a pretty simple routine. So I wash my face, in the morning, usually after I get home, right from the gym and take a shower. So there's a hydrating cleanser called Purify Me that I use, and then after that, I use like a deep replenishing serum and the Glow Me. I've post- posted about this a lot on Instagram. It's basically a tented uh, moisturizer that I use as my foundation, if you will. Uh, nighttime, same thing. Cleanser. I use a nourishing nighttime cream and then argan oil. My absolute favorite products from them. I have no skincare routine. <laughs> 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 I am so bad at like my makeup is literally like eyeliner mascara and if I have some breakouts I might use a little bit of concealer but like my skin's been pretty solid lately so I use a little bit of bronzer eyeliner mascara some eyeshadow every day and that's about it I just want to prevent the wrinkles I feel like they're inevitable I don't know I, I should probably be doing that. I should probably be using wrinkle preventing cream and I don't. I gave you the stuff for your I eyes. I know it's sitting in my drawer. <laughs> <laughs> next to my next to my sink and i just never I, you know what i do do at night i remove my makeup with a makeup you know, towelette that's what i do every night and then i use the fray wash skin wash so yeah. i i use the fray face wash every day in the shower yeah yeah you just don't moisturize i don't moisturize i should moisturize mm-hmm. i should i should i use the alba shampoo and body wash make sure that that is you know phthalate free and all of that good stuff paraben free so otherwise i'm just so I, I, I just don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I'll be totally honest. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the way that it, it makes my skin feel. So like I used to have a really bad acne and I haven't had acne in years. And honestly, I would say even coming off of birth control, um, Frey has kept my skin even through like the crazy weather that we have here in Chicago that is bipolar, um, you know, just really good and moisturized and stuff like that. So hopefully that helps you guys. I mean, it, at the end of the day, we try to keep it as simple as possible because we are very busy and we want to just simplify things. So hopefully this helps you kind of think about things that you can simplify or things that you can implement into your routines to be one step ahead. And we'll finish up this Q&A next weekend. So if you guys have questions, feel free to send them over info at fitmomlife.com or you can always message us on Instagram or Facebook. And with that, we hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.